What's happening guys? Today it's nice and cold here in Chicago, uh, but in about five seconds here it's going to be hot sticky July. What happened is I did an oil change video when I came back on tour, when I was doing my tour across America to fix cars, and I never got a chance to really put the video out. But what it is is a really intricate, really detailed video on how to do an oil change on a Ram Eco Diesel 3.0 liter properly. What you have to realize with cartridge based oil filtration systems and the intricate head design of this engine, you need to allow the engine to fully drain the oil down into the lower pan on there or else you're only gonna do a partial oil change on there. And there's a few other steps involved before you ever pull that drain plug also. So what I wanted to do was go over the whole procedure from start to finish in detail for you guys. So in case this is your, is your first oil change on this, on this vehicle, or it's your 10th one and you want to make sure you're doing it right, well, this is the definitive how-to video. Now one thing to note is the oil uh, type is the 5W30 Ultra Euro Oil, and that's a low ash oil that's good for well, the engine itself, but especially for the after treatment system that's on this truck. Also, the 2014s took about eight quarts of oil, whereas the 2015s, and of course, I'm sure 2016, 2017 on, are gonna take 10.5 quarts. So you need to know that while you, before you ever get involved in this because that oil isn't exactly readily available. I actually get mine from Amazon, it's the best price I found and I'll link to that down below in the filter and all that. I think the filter's like 40 some dollars from Amazon. Uh, OEM, Mopar filter, instead of 60 something at the dealer. So I'll link to all that down below. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing you wanna do is take a dry five to 10 miles depending on the ambient temperature and get the oil nice and hot on there. So when you pull that drain plug, it really flows out of there nice and fast. And that's not only to get all the oil you can out of there, but it's also to get all the garbage in the bottom of the pan that may be collecting over time. It'll actually rush past this so fast like a river stream and it'll push it out of there and pull it out with the rest of the oil instead of letting it just sit in the bottom of the pan. So let's go for a drive, nothing too aggressive. Now once you get back from the drive, what you wanna do is let the engine idle for three to five minutes so it can cool down the engine a little bit, and more importantly, cool down that turbo before you shut the system down on there. Don't worry, it'll still be smoking hot, and it'll come out nice and fast when we drain it out of there. Okay, we're back at the shop. We let it idle for about three to five minutes, and now you open the hood up, as you can see, so we can let it cool down a little bit and the oil to start draining back on there. You want to let the oil drain back on it for at least 10 to 15 minutes so it can really drain down to the lower pan on there and actually drain out. Otherwise, it's going to be stuck in the heads, and that's because of the intricate head design on here. One thing to note while you're letting it drain down is to make sure if you have a key fob like this, I'm not sure all of them have this, we have the push to start on these, but if you do, you want to make sure it's away from the vehicle, at least six feet away, so you cannot accidentally activate it while your vehicle's uh, low on oil on these. So while you're draining it out. So just something to keep in mind, get it away from there, let it drain down like so, and start taking a few things off, which I'll show you, and then we'll get down to the meat and bones of draining it out of here. The next thing I do is I get the appearance cover off of here and out of the way. Now it's not really in the way besides checking for leaks in the vehicle, but when you go to fill the oil up on here, you do one little spill on here, not only is this getting dirty, but everything underneath here is just gonna flow with the oil instead of cleaning it up before it all hits all that. So it's best to just pull up on it, get it off of there, and then you come to the other side on here, same thing, and you get it out of there, and everything's out in the open now. Now there's at least three points of contact on the engine that you need to know about when doing an oil change on these vehicles. And the first one is the location of the dipstick. It's right here. This is the oil level dipstick, so we're gonna leave that in for right now. And over here, like I said earlier, that's the oil fill spot right there. And then down here, that filter, that black filter cap right there, it holds the cartridge filter inside of there. So on the very top of it, it has a, a hex on top of it right there, you can see. And the size of that is an inch and sixteenths. So I like to use a six point hex on there instead of the 12 point sockets, uh, just so it doesn't round off the plastic on there. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is take that oil filter cap off. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow, get it on there first. What it's gonna do is allow all the oil that's inside of this oil filter housing here to drain back to the pan. So you wanna do all that at the same time that the rest of the oil is draining back from the heads and everything. So we're gonna break torque on it, 
Shouldn't be that tight on there. I think it's uh, 18 foot pounds. The torque's back on here. So nothing's gonna come bubbling out of here. You can just take this off of here and it has a check valve at the bottom of the housing there and it will drain into the pan for you. So you can pull it all the way off of here. Nothing should leak out. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is start pulling the lid off of here like this, tilt it up and get it over to your drain pan. And then we're gonna clean this area right here. Make sure nothing gets into the housing here. Let me get you down inside of there. You can see that valve right there. That's what I'm talking about. That's a little stopper valve to keep that filter housing full. Uh, once you pull the filter out, it'll drain out of there because that valve will release on there. So that's why it's all empty inside of there. Uh, which makes it nice and easy for, uh, you know, clean filter changes on here. Okay, so now as far as the oil filter on here goes, you're going to pull it off of here. It's going to be pretty hard to pull out of there. It locks in up top here. And get this thing out of the way. And then you're going to want to change the O-ring on here right here. Won't be included with your filter. So make sure that it's included before you start doing it. Get that out of there. I'll well, make sure you clean the outside of the threads here so that nothing foreign gets inside of there. And of course, take a look at the inside, make sure it's nice and clean. Now the only filter on the market right now is from Mopar themselves, uh, straight from Fiat, and there's no aftermarket ones out there or a cheaper alternative. This filter is like 60 some dollars from the dealer. Um, I think you can get it for 50 something on Amazon. I'll link to that down below, uh, the correct one on here. So open that up, and it should be all sealed like that. You see it? So it keeps contaminants out of there. And just make sure it looks you know, the same as the old one you took off, just in case there's any engineering changes. Uh, so put this to the side right now, and we'll concentrate on getting this O-ring on the filter housing before we forget. So we'll take it, put it on there, okay? She put it on there and it doesn't go right there you need to go one more groove down you can see it right there that's where it should be not up here so we're gonna make sure it's in the correct groove there and by doing this with the oil that's on the cap here still it's gonna be already pre lubed down there so you don't need to do anything extra with that after that take your brand new filter and you just simply stick it in here it'll self center and it'll snap, shouldn't fall out, should still spin, and there's another little O-ring on here, which will get lubed once it gets stuck into there. But that's about it, and that's the proper way to change the filter on here, make sure it's clean and all new. All right, so going back in, I'll give you a little bit broader view of how it goes back into there. You just wanna make sure when you first start this filter into there, that it goes in by hand. Nice and easy like so. You see how easy it is to spin it in there? That means you're not cross-threading. It's much easier to tell if you're cross-threading or not when you're doing it by hand. And you should be able to go all the way down like I am right now. I'm not exactly the strongest guy in the world. And I should be able to put it all the way down. Not only is this better as far as not cross-threading or any problems like that, jamming a filter up in there potentially, you also do it a lot faster. And the torque spec on here is right on the cap in case the model years are different. Uh, the ones I looked up were 18 or so. So it, it's not, it doesn't take that much. It's a little plastic cap. Now the one last thing I like to do is spray a little brake clean on a rag. We can come down in here and get any oil spillage up. And of course, clean the cap. That's just me though. At this point, we can come over here, let's put you up a little bit there, get this out of the way, and we can open our oil cap so we get some air flowing down through there. Also at this time, I recommend pulling the oil dipstick out also over here. 
which I showed you guys earlier. Okay, filters on, all the fluids are checked and topped off. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start draining the oil out of here. Uh, right here, you can see I have the old filter in here. You don't wanna soak this in the oil, so we're gonna get this out of here, put it back in the box, we can dispose of it properly at a later date here. So I'm gonna get this thing cleaned out so we're not soaking the filter again with the oil. And we could jam this underneath there and start draining the oil out. Okay, so underneath the vehicle here, you can see uh, the oil pan drain plug is right here behind the cross member here on the front frame. Uh, so it's very easy to get to. You have to pull any shields off, nothing like that. Simply come over here, get your drain plan ready to go. And it's a 13 mil on here. Again, the Chrysler is notorious for stripping out these 13 millimeter uh, drain plugs on here. Now this one's got a lot taller head on here, but still you want to use a six point uh, socket on here so you don't strip these puppies out on here. Uh, so you just simply brake torque on it. And this one's on here pretty tough. Okay. And once it comes out so far, especially on these aluminum pans, you should be able to pull it out by hand the rest of the way. No sweat. And what's nice, it comes that straight on down. It'll flow the heck out of there nice and fast. Now if you've never owned a diesel before, black uh, sooty oil like this is no problem. They'll get this even at 3,000 miles. It's just the way they are with all the blow-by and, and the pressure inside of the cylinders on there. Nothing to worry about at all. So we'll let this drain out of here until it gets to the point where it's just dripping every once in a while. And we'll give it another five minutes after that so we can fully drain the system. Like I said, the big part right now is that up top there, we let the system drain down from the heads and the rest of the engine, the valve train on there, down to the pan. Now we just need to let the pan drain and do its job too also. Now once it gets to this point on here, what you want to do is allow it to drain for another 5 to 10 minutes so that you can allow the rest of the oil from the engine to get out of here. Like I said, the head and the valve train, the design of this engine is very intricate design and it takes a little longer for the oil to flow completely out of here. So you can do anything else in the meantime while it's fully draining out of here. Check the tire pressure, stuff like that. Check for leaks underneath here, uh, stuff like that. I don't know if you guys saw it just right there, that's the reason why as stuff comes down from the top part there and the top part of the pan, it may come out in a large flow like that, so you gotta wait. Okay, at this point it's just fine to cap her off on here. I like to clean the area for the ceiling surface real quick. Start getting it in there. Again, do this by hand. You don't want to strip out anything on here. Clean the rest of this off. I get to tighten the drain plug on here. Now, I'll list the torque specs down below for the drain plug if you're really that interested in it. Uh, it's very easy to feel by hand when it's done on here. Get to the point where it stops and then give it another eighth turn or so, sixteenth. You'll feel it and it'll hold just fine on there. 
Now, as far as oil in here, what you want to use is a 5W30 full synthetic oil that meets European standards for low ash content. And the reason being is because of the SCR and the DPF systems back there to clean the exhaust, you don't want to plug them up with a high ash content oil. So this will meet the standards right here. This is what I recommend, the Pennzoil Ultra uh, European L Hyper Cleansing Full Synthetic Oil. Okay, so everything's back together down below. The oil filter's back on there. The dipstick is out. We have our cap off and my favorite fill funnel uh, right there inside of there so we can catch all the oil and not dump it all over the engine. Now, the 2014s, the spec for this was around 8 quarts, whereas the 2015s, it was 10.5 quarts. So they definitely did some improvements as they went along and bumped the level of the oil up in here. So make sure you note from your owner's manual what the proper oil level is, uh, the, the capacity is for your particular engine and year. And this stuff being full synthetic, you can see it just pours really nice. One quick uh, pre-check before starting it, make sure this is back on, your filter's tight, your drain plug's tight, and look down below and make sure there's no oil all over the ground that you just poured out. Alright, we got it started, no leaks noted anywhere, and next thing we're going to do is come over here to the oil level, dipstick, and we're going to check the level on there. Let's pop it in there. This is an ultra beefy dipstick, I tell you what. Make sure you fully insert it. And we'll pull it out of there and start checking the level on there. Now you can see my level on there, 10.5 quarts in there, right at that max line on there. Hopefully you can see that. So we did the oil change just right on here. So one last check of oil leaks and resetting the oil life indicator and we're done. One last step on here, put the appearance cover back on, hooks in the back. These two little notches. And then it simply lays down and pops in the front like that. And shining. All right, one last thing, we gotta reset the oil life monitor. So you go into your vehicle info tab there and you just scroll through it until you find the one that says oil life. And then as you can see down below, you hold the right triangle. Yes or no, confirm. And then you press it again and it should change out to 100% just like that. Okay, that wasn't that bad, was it? Everything on here is pretty easy to get to, so it makes for one of the easiest oil changes I've ever done on a diesel. Now, one of the last things I want to talk about is maintenance intervals. If you just bought the truck, it's brand new, wait till around 2,000 to 2,500 miles and do your first oil change. The reason being is no matter how well these engines are built, there's always that breaking process that produces the fine powder and, and the metal in there from the wear when they wear into each other, like the bearings wear into the main journals and stuff like that. It's always going to be there. It has to wear into each other like that. Now, after that, you can follow a regular 5K interval, which works out nicely because every 5K, you should be doing a tire rotation too. So every 5K, you do a loaf and a rotate, and then at 15K, you do a loaf, rotate, and fuel filter. And that way, all the systems on this truck, on this engine, are maintained and it should last you a very long time. Now, once again, the most important part of this whole procedure, of course, is to use the correct amount of oil, but also to use the correct oil, that Euro low ash oil, so you don't ruin anything in the engine or the exhaust after treatment system. If anything needs to be replaced on there, it's gonna be very, very expensive down the road. So hopefully this video is informative enough and gives you a general idea of what you're in for if this is your first oil change on your Ram Eco Diesel.